fiction, we sometimes have romances where the couples can only be described as the only person for them. And this is different from couples like, say, Ang and Katar from Avatar The Last Airbender, or Lois and Clark from Superman, or even Anna and Bates from Downton Abbey. Those relationships are more like they, they fit. They fit, and later on they could probably find someone a bit better. There's nothing inherently unique about the characters and how the relationship works. And a good example would be like, you know, they don't really challenge each other. And another thing is that there really is there's nothing keeping them apart, which is a big part of how these relationships work. They don't instantly, easily click. And it sort of has a bit of a tragic, romantic feel to it. But examples of this would be sort of Batman and Catwoman, Tom King's run notwithstanding, House and Cuddy, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Siri Taichi, slash Duchess of Teen, and in this case, Scrooge McDuck and Glitter and Goldie. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Scrooge and Goldie's relationship and just sort of how it works. This is going to be our Valentine's Day Life of Scrooge Best of Two Worlds video. So, Goldie first appeared in 1952 in the Uncle Scrooge story Back to the Klondike, written by Carl Barks. And here, Goldie is introduced to us as a singer at the Blackjack Ballroom. And in this story, she drugs Scrooge and takes his gold, which results in Scrooge going in, fighting everyone in the Blackjack Ballroom, and ultimately dragging Goldie to his claim to work to see just how hard prospectors work for the gold they dig. The story is pretty straightforward, and... To be fair, Back to the Klondike takes place mostly in a flashback, with Scrooge recounting the story to Donald and the boys. And what is more interesting is later we actually see them have a back and forth when Scrooge meets her again. And why this relationship is unique is because, as we'll see, Scrooge is sort of like Schroeder from the Peanuts when it comes to romance. He doesn't quite hear it. I mean, there was an interesting quote about Schroeder in the unrequited love documentary for for um is Valentine's Day Charlie Brown and the fact that Schroeder like Beethoven is deaf but he's a different kind of deaf he's deaf to Lucy's feelings he's deaf to romance and for Scrooge that's mostly it he doesn't quite get it he doesn't really make time for it and this story sort of shows that there was someone there was at least one instance where he was nervous and smitten and was in love and we see this with his interaction with Goldie and she sort of feels the same way too and this story is unique because Barks usually approaches Scrooge as sort of a very pragmatic person a very not really overly emotional and he doesn't really like shed the tears or very rarely does his heart go out to someone and this story has Scrooge not only talking about Goldie in a very romantic way, pointing out, you know, she was spangled and flashy and her heart was as hard as the eyes of the tundra, the only live one I ever knew. He's even willing to help her get money. And, and I think the only way he can outside of doing it from a business perspective, he effectively rigs a contest for her to win and literally helping her dig up gold that he hid somewhere else. And for the most part from the Barks era, that's it. Fast forward to, let's say, the DuckTales era from 1987, and they had a cartoon, a Back to the Klondike. It was loosely based off of that actual comic. The difference in this is a bit more, the story is obviously more romantic, with another difference being that instead of Goldie drugging Scrooge, she cheats him at cards, and he threatens to go to the police if she doesn't come and work it off. And in that story, it's again told in flashback from Scrooge, this time to Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby, and... The story is during that month, they fall in love, and they plan to get married, but the actions of Dangerous Dan lead to both of them thinking that the other has taken their gold and gone off somewhere, and then they reunite, as these stories tend to work. There's a fight with Dangerous Dan, who might be the tallest duck in the duck universe, I'm not entirely sure. But again, the story is they're, they're, they have a sort of back and forth, a sort of clever flirt, they're interested in each other, and... When it all comes together, what really works here is that they sort of can't be together in the way they'd like to just because there are different points in their lives. Goldie's life is in the Klondike and Scrooge is in Duckburg with the businesses and going on adventures and they effectively resolve like, you know, they'll wait for a time when they can both be together. 
So in the DuckTales mythos for this point, Goldie shows up in other episodes, uh, Tell Nephews Do Us Part, Scroogerello, and Ducky Mountain High, and they all serve the same purpose, mostly of showing that Goldie is the only woman for Scrooge, even if in nephew, even if in stories like Tell Nephews Do Us Part, she is literally willing to shoot him for being uh, effectively about to marry someone else. It's, it's <laughs> it was a weird episode, a bit strange. Then we come to the Don Rosa era, and as I think we've already made it clear how Rosa operates in in the Duck universe, he likes to expand on stuff that Karl Barks has already left behind. And he was very he was sort of very set on not adding to anything more that happened between young Scrooge and young Goldie. There would be no added material after what Barks said, for the most part. And what this means is he really only added to the story in the sense that he went into detail onto that month that was spent in in White Agony Creek. And that was in the story of the prison in White Agony Creek. And what he did there was actually a really fun story. Because not only does it go into detail of it, we get a sort of back and forth between the two of them and see exactly what's going on in the mindset of Scrooge and Goldie. With Goldie learning to sort of appreciate Scrooge, he's not just some sort of greedy, um, vicious miner who only cares about himself. He's someone who's had to leave home at a young age to support his family. You know, he's he's worked very hard to finally get somewhere. The, the Barks era sort of starts off with King of the Klondike, where Scrooge and Goldie only meet once. They have like a little a little bit of dialogue, and then they go about the day, and Goldie's the one that's more interested in him than he is with her. And it's only really in this interaction that we see uh, why Scrooge really dragged her down here. For the most part, we know that Scrooge dragged her down here because of the gold she stole, but it's also to sort of get Goldie to appreciate something a bit more and it sort of gets into Scrooge's mindset that he's seeing himself become possibly a bit jaded, and he sees that it's a bit too far along, far along for him, and there might be a chance to reach out to Gold. At least that's how I always took it. And he's also sort of admiring her work ethic, because when it comes time for her to actually work, she she will work. And it sort of changes the st the dynamic between the two of them, because if you go by the Barks era, the Barks era, back to the Klondike, which is still the template for this, it has a sort of... Mm, Ebenezer Scrooge feel to it that there could have been a relationship here but because of Scrooge's own nature his own personality, his own viewpoint that he misses the chance and this, what makes it different is Goldie is sort of the same so it's not like inherently just his fault even more so I think it's because Scrooge honestly has no idea what to do he's not really used to being that open and that vulnerable and neither is Goldie hence Heart of the Yukon where Goldie, who just won't flat out say she likes Scrooge and wants to see him, has to effectively nearly get him arrested so he'll come down and see her. And also at the time, Goldie, uh, also at the time, Scrooge doesn't want to admit that he also likes Goldie. To the, and then there's sort of a really tragic moment when Goldie sends a letter to Scrooge, and as much as he would like to read it, he feels it better that he not read it, and he leaves it in the snow. And then we come to The Last Sled to Dawson. So The Last Sled to Dawson is another story told in flashback, just like just like Prisoner of Wine Agony Creek. And what makes uh, The Last Sled to Dawson fun is because we find out that Scrooge had intended to say something to Goldie in the story involving, well, a sled that was trapped in the ice. It was Scrooge's sled. And what ensues is a race between Scrooge and Soapy Slick to get to that sled, with Soapy thinking that there's something valuable and there's something of monetary value. It turns out there's just his old clothes and a letter addressed to Goldie with a box of chocolates. We as the audience don't know what's in the letter, but Goldie, when she reads it, smiles lovingly and she's super happy. And so it's left to imply that Scrooge was presumably going to make a move. And this is reinforced by the Billionaire of Dismal Down story, which predates this, which says that Scrooge had planned to settle down in the Klondike. But circumstances made him think otherwise, and he bought the Bank of Whitehorse. And I think a really great bit was that in the story Last Let's Doll, so we still see the sort of hold that Goldie has over Scrooge, that she's the only woman that can make him nervous and sort of blush, and it's actually really sweet. And another great example is is another story by Don Rose in this era, is A Little Something Special, where all of Duckburg wants to give Scrooge the perfect gift for his golden jubilee, and they all like they all try to come up with really ridiculous things. And what happens is Donald and his and his family 
they 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 pay for Goldie to come down to Duckburg, and she plants a really big kiss on Scrooge, and he he just sort of like doubles down, like puts all these walls up. So like I don't have time for this. My stupid nephew must have done this. Look, I have a world empire to run. I can't waste time. Um, uh, on something like romance, and Goldie just goes, I know, I know, and she says she'll wait, and when she's gone, Scrooge just sort of looks away, looks on lovingly with a sigh, with tears in his eyes, as to how happy that made him. Then we jump to the 2017 version, and we get a very different Goldie and different Scrooge dynamic, and I don't, I'm not sure I like this, I think it's like my least favorite, although I do sort of like it in some ways. In this Goldie is introduced in the episode The Golden Lagoon of White Agony Plains, and this shows Goldie as a sort of Catwoman, River Song kind of character. You know, she's an adventurer, not just a singer, who exists in a time of Scrooge's life. She and Scrooge went on adventure to find The Golden Lagoon of White Agony Plains, and then they get encased in ice, and... They're there for five years, and apparently Scrooge and Goldie fell in love, or at least Scrooge fell in love with Goldie, but when she thought out, she didn't go, she didn't try to help him out, and that led to all the damage there. It's really weird, honestly, and the only thing I really like about it is the sort of back and forth flirting they have in that adventure, and Scrooge is sort of a bit more vulnerable in that one, it's like, you know, you loved Gold more than you loved me, and Goldie seems to sort of like Scrooge McDuck because he's Scrooge McDuck, the great adventurer. The idea that he's the only one that can keep up with her. And it's it's alright, but it's the other stuff has a bit more substance to it. Glim and Goldie and Scrooge's relationship is rather standout in fiction. It's especially standout for Disney, Let, let's be clear about that. They're unique characters, but first and foremost, they they are characters. And the relationship is one of not automatic tragedy, but it is sort of a relationship of circumstance and of it's sort of exactly what I think would happen to this sort of relationship. You know, something isn't said, something is not communicated, a chance is not taken, even though they both really want to. The difference I think is that when most of these relationships don't happen because of um, different allegiances like Batman or Catwoman or horrible circumstances slash behind the scenes actions like House and Cuddy. Or even just a matter of duty, like Kenobi and Siri Taichi. The reason they don't get together is because, in part, they're just too stubborn to admit they liked each other. Too afraid to be vulnerable and open to really get together in the past. And now they lead two very different lives in the present that are resolved to wait for the day they carry on. Minus the the new Uncle Scrooge stuff, which I yeah, I don't want to talk about. It. Anyway, with with that in mind, let's bring this video to close here. Um, if you're new to the Bucket Thanks, thank you for your like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out some other videos on this channel in the Life of Scrooge series, the um, Doctor Who stuff, what, whatever. We'll probably talk about it. And I will catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. May your fandom serve you well.